Hey everybody. So today we have quite the project. Um, I'm gonna make my mom a bag and this is all I got. So we're gonna kind of freestyle everything. Um, we're gonna use this beautiful um, tumbled Italian leather. It's about six ounce, seven ounce thick. And I'm gonna freestyle through it. So the, the I don't have a pattern. So the way I'm gonna assemble this is not the way you would assemble it when you have a pattern. It's the way you would assemble it when you're kind of making the first of something and figuring out the measurements as you go. So this is honestly all I've got. Um, it's gonna be kind of a traditional crossbody saddlebag, like 70s, 60s, 70s style. Um, I have some rougher measurements. She wants it to be able to fit a water bottle so that she can go on day trips with it. Um, I'm gonna put a little pocket in the back on the inside. And then for the closure, we're gonna do kind of a, a loop and strap type thing, um, which I'll show you when we get into it. I've, I've done this a couple times, um, but it's going to be fairly new for me as well, because usually you do these with metal. Uh, so this is all we have to get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting a, one piece of this leather at 10 inches by 12 inches. And so now that we have this, is going to be roughly the size of the front of the, or the size of the bag, really. Um, but I want to add a little shape to it, so we're going to round these corners. But first, I want to add a slight inwards taper, just a tiny bit. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to I have this squared up on my mat, and I'm going to put my, my ruler at the bottom edge, and then up just a... We'll go a half inch. So it's going to be 10, uh, 11 inches wide at the top and 12 inches wide at the bottom. So that won't give us like a super dramatic effect, but it'll just bring it in a little bit so it's not totally square. And now I'm going to sort through the shop to find a curve that'll work for the bottom of this. All right, so what I did was I made our gusset here. It's two different pieces, and because, again, because I don't have a pattern, I'm just kind of winging it. So I have extra, more than what I need. I joined it in the center, did two rivets and a stitch joint. Um, and what I've done is I've marked the center on the front of the bag. Now, the way I'm gonna put this seam together, I'm not gonna sew it like this. That's how we're gonna do the, the base. I'm actually gonna sew it like this, so that it kind of folds over and pops the bag out and gives it some dimension. And then it's kind of wide because, again, my mom wants to fit a water bottle, so she's going to get to fit her water bottle. Um, so the way I'm going to do this to get the right amount of stitches is I'm actually going to punch from this center mark all the way around, and I'm going to count, not individual punches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to punch. So, for example, I'll start with my prong on the center, and I'll punch. And that's one punch of the five prong or whatever. Two, three... Four. I'll probably have to switch to a small one, but I'll just write it down. So I'll say like three punches of the five prong, eight punches of the two prong, six punches of the five prong, right? Then I'll go to my gusset and I'll just simply start here and I'll just do the same thing out. And so I, I know I'll have extra on either side, but when we go to sew this, and I'm not going to use any glue. You can use glue if you have a pattern, of course. I'm not going to because we're just winging it. Um, when I go to sew this, all the holes should match up and I should have exactly enough holes on the gusset and on the front of the bag. And once our first seam is done, you can kind of see what this looks like when we're doing, I don't even know what this joint is called, but this is good for, this is nice for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is you start, your bag starts to take shape pretty much immediately. Besides this little joint here, your first joint, we can kind of get an idea of what the bag's gonna look like. The second is we're doing no flipping. We're not flipping inside out. So we don't really need piping around here because we don't have a flip joint. And also we're just not flipping. So I know a lot of people don't like to flip bags. I don't like to flip bags when you're using thick leather like this. This is just a really nice way to do it. 
So the next step, and like I said, this is a little bit out of order because I don't have a pattern. If you have a pattern for something like this, you would put the D-rings on the sides for our shoulder strap. You would do that before you sewed this in. Um, I wanted to get this put on so that I could get location because I don't have a pattern, don't really, I wanted to see it done. So we're going to cut, this is a seven, eight ounce of the same leather. And I'm just gonna use the same solid brass rivets to do a couple rivets and rivet the D's onto the sides of the bag. And we end up with just some nice D-ring attachment points, which I really like because this allows you to do kind of any type of strap you want. If you down the road want to change it to a different type of strap, you can make multiple straps and just clip them on and off, whatever. Um, so the next step is we got to get a back made for this and it's going to be the same shape as this. I should have traced it out and made two, but I didn't. So I'll just cut another one. Um, we're going to add a pocket on the inside and then I'm going to do the flap separate. All right, so here's what we got going. I got a duplicate piece of our front right here. This is gonna be our back. And then this is gonna be our flap. We're gonna do an overlap here and I've already scratched up to glue. So we'll do an overlap here and then we'll stitch around. And then we're gonna do, this'll give us room. First of all, it'll be a double layer for structure. And then secondly, we're gonna do a little briefcase style handle. That's what my mom wants. And then we're gonna attach our strap for our closure here as well. So we'll have a double stitch joint that has three or five rivets in it. That'll give us a lot of rigidity for the bag to sort of be structured and hang on. Well, it's not gonna hang off of it, but it'll, it'll add structure. So we're gonna get that done now. So I have uh, this rolled handle, tubular handle, that I made, and we actually did a video on this uh, last week. So if you want to see how these are made, um, I'll put a link in the description or it'll come up in the corner. Uh, you can click on that. But it's just a little six, uh, seven inch handle, and this is going to be kind of the secondary handle, so you can hang it on a hook or you can just hold the bag like this, but it's going to have a crossbody strap. So what we need to do now is uh, we need to glue this to the back here. And what I'm actually going to do is overlap where our flap seam is. I just think it'd be an interesting um, sort of design detail to have this. You could just kind of put it like that, like a mailbag. I'm going to slide it down and I made them a little bit longer um, just to have a little bit of a, an interesting detail in the back there with the logo in the middle. So I'm going to glue these in and get them stitched up.
So I have this little lined um, strap situation here, and I'm, I'm gonna, we, we did one take trying to explain how everything works. It's going to just be easier to show you when it all comes together. So for now, what I'm doing is I'm riveting. All I'm going to do, we need a loop here. So this creates our loop, and I'm just going to simply rivet into place. I think that the having a couple rivets here will be a nice little detail. And so we have our, what is it, the burr? And we're just going to set this. And then we're going to clip this. And these are solid brass rivets from Weaver. They're super nice. And then we just tap this down. And then I like to go over one more time and just do a little bit more rounding with our with the dome die on the end of the rivet setter. And then I'm just going to do the other side. And so with that, this is going to be the end of part one of this bag project, uh, the video series. Um, we have our handle in, we have all of our bag attachments done. In the next video, we're going to add a pocket to the inside here. We're going to attach the bag together, complete that, get the whole flap settled, and we'll make up some sort of shoulder strap as well. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.